right i think we are we are waiting for okay right so i think the connection is live as of now so once again good evening to all of you welcome back to practically live vedic mathematics part 3 hope you can hear me properly and also the slides are visible so let me have a peep into the chat box right now into yes chat box right now all right i think there will be an echo okay so all right so uh, let's wait for maybe 5 minutes till everyone is settled all right all right all right so hope everyone can see yeah hi lakshmi good evening so is the audio clear to all of you lakshmi is the audio clear so i don't see any response let's wait till the response comes in i'm not sure whether i'm lagging here yes okay let me just refresh my chat box all right hi sudarshana okay thank you for confirming all right once again welcome to the class welcome to practically live so this is uh, vedic mathematics part 3 or you can call it module 3 uh maybe i have to recall some of your names all right so kindly wait for uh, about 5 minutes so that uh, we have enough students on time uh some students if you are using a uh, mobile phone to view this you may have to increase the quality of the video because by default youtube sets the quality to be a little less so you can go and set your desired quality in the settings all right so let us see who has joined in the chat okay so i see a thunderstorm okay bhuvan hi bhuvan welcome to the class all right so when you are introducing yourself in the chat box it would be nice if you could give me uh, information on what class are you from and what is your interesting topic not related to vedic mathematics something that interests you some game or some sport you can just mention that in the chat box all right so bhuvan is from 10th okay all right good so yeah what is your interest interest or hobby or something you can mention while you introduce so what do you like painting playing reading something like that you can mention that the others are also who have joined i see sudarshana and i saw also lakshmi somewhere on top all right so i don't see any response from the students maybe they are typing in oh okay so bhuvan likes kabaddi oh and is a district player okay nice so um this course is going to be um a different course uh, so this will be not like what you are taught in schools so we'll be taking a lot of uh, games 
so that we can improve our creativity and also understand the topics that are covered in mathematics with a lot of fun. Okay. All right. So what about Sudarshana? Uh, if you don't mind, can you mention what class are you from? Which class are you from? All right. Okay, before we just begin, um, let me just introduce to the uh, kind of uh, procedure that we'll be following for the classes. So this will be uh, weekly, we'll have two hours one on Friday and one on Saturday. Actually, we were set to begin yesterday, but there were some technical problems. That's why we are starting only today. So what you will be having is one hour of lecture and in between you will have some kind of refreshment spots. So in the refreshment spots, you will have some kind of game that we'll play together so that um, you understand the concept being learned. So apart from this, uh, I'm also providing some uh, additional ingredients so that it would be helpful for your learning. So let me just show that once. Let me try to switch the window. Okay, one such thing is called as the checklist, the course checklist. So the checklist uh, will be available in the description of the video that you are watching right now. So go and check uh, whether this file is available in the description after the class. So it should be made available and also probably it will be made available in the uh, chat box as well. So the whole idea of the checklist is to help you uh, understand what you are learning. So for example, week one, we, this is the current week. So yesterday's class was not included in this. I have written down the topics that we, we are actually learning in this. Now what you can do is that in your checklist that you're going to download, nothing will be written. So once the class is over, you can write down whatever topic you have learned. And if you have understood the topic that you have learned, you can give a tick mark by the side. So this is an editable form. The PDF can be edited. You can give a tick, tick mark against your week one, topic one. Similarly, write down all the topics that you remember after attending the class. And suppose you don't understand, say, you don't understand this particular topic. You can tick all the other topics and leave that there so that you understand that you have something that is un not understood. So in the next class, what you can do is that you can raise a doubt in the chat box and I'll be explaining that topic once again. Okay, so this will, this will be a kind of very useful tool so that you have everything in one page. This is called as a course checklist and below in the checklist, you can also provide your name and class. All right. So the checklist link is uh, appearing in the chat box as well. So it will be there. Um, uh, it will be there in the chat box for your reference. It is also available in the uh, in the video description, which you can check after the class is over. All right. So if you all of you are um, ready right now, settle down, give a thumbs up in the chat box so that we can start with the topics. So today we'll just move with the flow. We'll introduce some background and then get into the main subject. So if you are ready, kindly give a uh, thumbs up. So uh, the uh, game that we are going to begin with is a breathing game. Okay, so let us all start breathing very deeply so that we get settled very fast for the class. Okay, I'll count till uh, 10 and then count reverse. So from 10 to first, I'll count from 1 to 10 and then I'll count from 10 to 1. So that will make us settled. 
take long deep breaths one two three four five six seven eight nine ten nine eight seven six five four three two and one okay all right yeah thank you rakesh for providing those uh, comments in the chat box so as i said uh, in between i'll be giving you refreshment spots so i'll be checking only the chat box during those refreshment spots so kindly uh, uh, kindly um, post your questions when we reach those spots so i'll be informing about that uh, otherwise i might miss some of the chats that are being written all right so i think everyone agrees to this uh, don't worry so much about the checklist i'll be repeating about the checklist once again in between the class all right all right so let's begin by thinking on why we need to study vedic mathematics so some of the things are already explained in part 1 and part 2 but let us Uh, make the things very concrete what is the objective of learning vedic mathematics you already are learning mathematics in school so why do you need this additional mathematics course which is called as vedic mathematics all right so the first reason is because many students uh, face a kind of fear towards mathematics because numbers are not very uh, nice uh sometimes they can be scary uh especially when you see the marks and all put in the uh, your answer sheets etc so the first goal is to remove that kind of phobia or fear so i would like everyone to move from this emoji to this emoji by the end of the class all right the second thing is that by learning uh, the mathematics in a slightly different way in a creative manner it also helps you to build strong logical abilities logical ability meaning uh, suppose you are given a sequence of activities to do you can arrange the activity in a particular sequence so that there is a continuation there is a flow so think of a game think of a football game everybody is chasing that single ball and the goal of the game is to attain as many goals as you can isn't it so similarly you have to orient uh, the learning of mathematics in a way so that you reach a particular goal or a milestone so that you feel encouraged to learn about mathematics better okay actually do not think a problem to be problem you should become a master of the problem so that you can solve the problem okay so we will be doing a lot of problem solving skills in this class especially we will take up word problems that is uh, very important as far as examinations competitive examinations are concerned and of course the third one is the most attractive of all uh vedic mathematics gives you lot of tips so that you can calculate faster uh and you can finish the exams on time with limited space with limited writing and without uh much mental stress another proven fact is that uh the approach of vedic mathematics improves your concentration so nowadays uh the attention span of the class usually they say that 20 minutes is the average attention span of each student so a student who is attending this lecture he will concentrate for 20 minutes and after that is not concentrating any more in the lecture so in this approach 
we are going to improve the concentration span so that you feel involved and also there is an objective behind every activity that we do in this class the other fact is that uh, vedic mathematics encourages mental calculations so the mind is the biggest laboratory in the world so uh, vedic mathematics is using the laboratory space of the mind so the mind is going to be the main focus here so if you want to improve your speed of calculation definitely you should improve your concentration of the mind and the ability to visualize uh, the concepts in the mind so we will do some training activities so that at the end of this course you are in a position to do calculations at a much faster rate and it has been shown in some studies that in certain problem solving methods vedic mathematics is 30 times faster so this is published research by uh, leading universities so you can rely on them so if you take this course a little bit rigorously or seriously by the end of this set of lectures you will be at least getting to 10 times faster than what you were so do not think about competing with others so the competition is with ourselves so only make a comparison with what you are present so presently suppose a calculation takes one minute make it 30 seconds tomorrow so the competition is with what you are today all right the last thing is about creativity so usually students miss the creative aspect of mathematics so they feel the subject of mathematics as very uh, uh, very dry or very boring or lethargic because uh, they don't they don't approach it in a creative spirit the whole idea of introducing vedic mathematics is to induce this creativity so we are going to ignite the creativity and this is going to drive you to solve problems and identify the objectives on why you are solving a particular problem so look at an artist who is painting a picture so nobody tells the artist what to paint but the artist has a vision which he is going to translate into colors and shapes in a similar manner mathematics is like a painting where you are given the tool as numbers and sometimes it is variables some algebra or some other concepts all these are tools or brushes that you can use to make your painting better so this is the creative aspect that we are going to introduce so there will be a lot of uh, games there will be a lot of fun so stay tuned till the end all right so i can see some of you are uh, raised in spirit and also want to do calculations fast so um let us go over uh, vedic map tour so before we study something or before we visit a place we will go for a virtual tour right we would like to know what places are there to visit so in a similar manner let us see what is the map of vedic maps what are the important places in this map and we are going to, to take a virtual tour through Vedic Max. You can imagine that we are going for a picnic. So, first of all, what does the word Veda mean? So, this is not an ordinary word. The word Veda is a very significant word. That's why it is put here before Vedic Max. So, the first word is vedic so the word veda in general means knowledge but it's more than knowledge it is 
something called as realized knowledge or it is called as the topmost knowledge so think of a building which has 100 floors the 100 floor building a person enters through the first the ground floor when he enters through the ground floor he ha only has information about the ground floor and not about the floor what is happening in the upper floors now he is taking the stairs and going to the first floor second floor third floor etc now there will be a person sitting in the hundredth floor who can see all the happenings of the other floors all the things that are happening below so this vedic mathematics is going to take you to that hundredth floor so that you can see everything crystal clear so this word veda here means realized knowledge or practical knowledge so we are going to deal with practical mathematics here now what are the uh, vedas that we know so you are uh, you might have heard from your parents or grandparents about the puranas the literature etc is it what is is that also called as vedas yes so puranas are part of the vedas so the vedic mathematics is slightly different from that it is a part of all the knowledge that has been written down since time immemorial so these vedas dates back to more than 5000 years at least it is 5000 years old so this is the maturity of the knowledge that we are going to deal with now basically you might have heard that we have four different kind of vedas we will not go dig deep into that that you can read in some other source but the important thing is that this knowledge is not easily acquired you have to give some time to acquire the knowledge the knowledge that we are going to deal here is realized knowledge and most of this knowledge has come from word of mouth so a student will go to the teacher and the teacher just says what are the things just like you attend this class only listening is happening so the teacher just does not write anything he just transmits the knowledge through mouth so this system was called as shruti and the student's duty is to remember all this knowledge and also translate that knowledge into practice so that system is called as smriti or remembrance smriti meaning slightly you can uh, translate to English as memory so Shruti can be something like speech so the teacher passes the information or knowledge through Shruti and the student gains that knowledge through the system of Smriti now what are the topics that we learn in this uh, subject of Veda so the, the topics are very wide i have only listed a few of them here so some of them are grammar astronomy architecture psychology philosophy ar archery archery is warfare actually so you can write warfare here so everything was actually part of the veda vedic civilization you can call actually these subjects are uh, belong to what is called as vedanga or uh, veda anga means limbs or hands so these are extensions of the veda itself and uh, there are other subjects of interest as well uh, so this archery or warfare this is described in a veda called as the danur veda and uh, or you might have heard about ayurveda so ayurveda is about health health and well-being so that is one other veda anga and uh, there is also something called as the Gandharva Veda which talks about music so in first sight you will see everything that is written in music is like musical there is no mathematics involved in that but that is not the fact there is a lot of mathematics going to music 
So if you go deep into the subject of Gandharva Veda, you will, you will see how ragas have been designed, how you get that musical sense by variation of the frequencies, why certain frequencies are harmonics, etc. So all these are very beautifully described on all these Vedic subjects. And there is also a part which talks about engineering, finance, everything. So everything is included in this uh, Vedic knowledge. But remember that you will have to gain this knowledge through the process of Shruti and Smriti. There is no shortcut to reach this knowledge. All right. So with that basic understanding, let us go uh, straight away to the subject of mathematics in Vedas. So uh, as you all know, uh, in the Indian languages, we call mathematics as Ganita. So the Ganita has been discussed as a part of Atharva Veda. It's one of the four main Vedas. And um, for a long time, it had been hidden from the general public. Only very enlightened people could read and understand these uh, concepts in Atharva Veda, which is called as Ganita Sutras. So the term sutras we'll be using throughout this course. So for now, you can uh, understand sutras as formula. So everybody might have learned one formula or the other. The easiest thing that I can say now is the Pythagoras theorem where you have learned the following. Pythagoras theorem. What is the Pythagoras theorem say? The If three sides of a, a triangle, right angle triangle are A, B and C and C is the hypotenuse then a squared plus b squared equal to c squared. So this is a very easy formula. So in um, uh, the Vedas also we have formulas like this, but it's slightly written in a different way. Uh, you don't know whether it is a text or whether it's a mathematical formula. So you will need some training to understand uh, what is the sutra and what is the meaning of the sutra. So we'll be dealing with both of that today, uh, both of that in this set of lectures. Sometimes sutras are also called as aphorisms. So this is a slightly technical term. Uh, you can look up in a very uh, in a in some dictionary what is the exact meaning, but approximately the meaning is uh, like song like something that can be sung. So the sutras, since they are, they can be easily sung, they can be easily remembered and recalled. So that is the power of the Ganita sutras. So if you, if you learn once and if you know how to sing it well, you remember it easily. So uh, you can, you can uh, correlate with anything. Uh, you, you can, uh, you, you have seen a very nice ad in the, uh, in the TV. And uh, uh, the next time you go and see that uh, item in the uh, store, you immediately recall what was the ad, what was the tune that was there, etc. So similarly, once you hear the sutras as a song, it is easy to digest, it is easy to recall. Another meaning for sutras is called a string. So string uh, meaning something like you tie the flowers together so using a string so string is going to connect ideas so sutras in another word is an idea that has been uh, tied together in a flow all right now the interesting part of ganita sutras is that most of these verses or aphorisms are written as stories so when you just read this you you will you will just uh, you will just feel as if you are reading a, another story book so you don't uh, you don't realize that you are learning mathematics uh, but there is a lot of underlying mathematics beneath it so i can give you a book reference for you all of you might have re read this book called alice in wonderland 
I don't think anybody has missed to read this book called Alice in Wonderland. If somebody has missed to read this, kindly go and either read it or you can uh, hear uh, the story being narrated in some of the uh, videos. It is available in YouTube. So kindly go and listen to it. Uh, you will see there is a lot of mathematics being written in Alice in Wonderland. While you read the story, you, you may not notice that. But if you read it at least carefully, you will see that there is a lot of mathematics that is being talked about. Okay, so this book is written by Lewis Carroll. So the author is Lewis Carroll, if I am not wrong. So please go and read it. I'll I'll give some exercise at a later point of time so that so that uh, we uh, we dig up all the mathematics written in the story. And the last point that I want to mention is today we are able to learn Vedic mathematics because of this enlightened soul. Uh, his name is Sri Bharati Krishna Tirthaji. He was. Uh, a uh, great Indian sage who lived in this period of 1884 to 1960 and he has given us this treasure of Vedic mathematics which includes 16 important formulae or what we call as sutras. Now in this lecture we will be just taking one of this 16. We will be just learning one such sutra and uh, in English, the sutra is called as vertically and crosswise. So I'll talk about that in a bit. All right. Uh, so let me just give a refreshing um, spot here and I'll just go through the chat box so that if anybody has something to ask or something to share, I can read that. All right. Say, so uh, Rakesh says, uh, I want to speed up uh, in calculations definitely Rakesh after the course you will be able to speed up uh, all right so Manvita says I have already uh, said all this uh, so I think I introduced a little bit of description this time uh, because this is a slightly advanced uh, topic right now um, Amar says I have watched uh, the movie I don't know about whom is it Alice in Wonderland or uh, is it about some other movie that you're talking about? So next time if you have a chance, uh, those who have only seen the movie, just go and read the book because there is a lot of mathematics that is there. So it will be an interesting. Don't read so much. Just read one or two pages. That would be sufficient because every page there is a little bit of mathematics in it. Yes. So Amar says there is a movie called Alice in Wonderland. Okay. So if uh, you don't have time to uh, read the book, go and see the movie. All right. So, all right. So uh, I think we can proceed further. Now I'll slightly increase the speed. Okay. So TG, I don't, Bhuvan, I think Bhuvan is asking a question. Yeah, please ask Bhuvan. Yeah, please go ahead, Bhuvan. All right. So in the meantime, everybody can read through this slide. So this, these are the set of nine topics that we are going to deal with in this uh, part three of Vedic mathematics. So first we'll start with vertically and crosswise. So this is the first sutra that we are going to deal with in this course. It is also called as Urdhva Tiryak. So that is a Sanskrit name. Um, actually, we are uh, we had missed uh, this particular lecture. It was supposed to be held yesterday. Now we are trying to combine these two lectures. So you will have a part of the second lecture also being told today. All right, Bhuvan, uh, I didn't see your question in the chat box. Can we have the uh, question taken in the next refreshment spot? Is that fine? All right, so I don't see any response from Bhuvan. I'm not sure whether, um, so the name in the chat is TG Thunderstorm. I think it is Bhuvan, uh, if I'm not mistaken. All right, so let us discuss a little bit more. So in the 
uh, previous part we had uh, discussed what is called as a vedic square so vedic square is basically the multiplication table so if you see this uh, particular table that is written here which is very colorful the thing to note is that i have only written the multiplication table from 1 to 9 so you can see 1 multiplied by 1 is 1 1 multiplied by 2 is here 1 multiplied by 3 1 multiplied by 4 5 6 etc up to 9 the second row is going to be 2 multiplied by 1 2 multiplied by 2 2 multiplied by 3 etc up to 2 multiplied by 9 third row is similar 3 into 1 3 into 2 3 into 3 etc 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 so final row is 9 into 1 9 into 2 9 into 3 9 into 4 etc up to 9 into 9 now do you recall this nine point circle that we learned anybody recall the nine point circle okay so i'll just talk about it in brief so nine point circle is something like a clock which has only nine hour hands so you can imagine that there is a clock in the planet of jupiter where only nine hours are there so how do you fill this hands you can fill it very easily so these are all revision uh, we have already dealt with so we have already numbers till nine so 10 you can write here 11 is here 12 is here 13 14 15 16 17 now the good thing here is that if you add the digits of 10 it is 1 plus 0 if you add the digits you are going to get the number 1 if you add the digits of 11 you are going to get the number 2 similarly for 12 13 etc up to 17 17 1 plus 7 is 8 so you can convert this particular table using this clock what you have to do is wherever the number say take a number here 12 12 appears replace this by the number 3 whenever there is a 15 you replace by 6 whenever there is 18 you replace by so 18 comes here you replace by 9 so you get another another square and this square will have only numbers from 1 to 9 and last time we have seen how you can make beautiful pictures by connecting the numbers all right so you can do that as a part of a homework so you can re remember this particular uh, vedic square you can write down that in your book after the class and what you have to do is you check this clock you have written two uh, uh, the numbers up to one to nine what you have to do is if you get a two digit number you sum the digits and write the sum of the digits if the sum of the digits is still a two digit number for example for 64 the sum of digits is going to be 6 plus 4 which is equal to 10 but 10 is a two digit number if you get a two digit number again sum the two digits your answer is 1 so in the box of 64 you should write the number 1 now as a homework take this particular uh, table and try to convert it using the nine point circle all right now we are going to the first game in this class so what i am going to do is a slight magical thing uh, so i am going to guess your birthday using some simple mathematical operations okay so what you have to do is you have to remember your birth day and birth month so for example uh, what is today's date 20 so 20 november is somebody's birthday you just have to remember 20 and november so instead of november we will be converting it into the uh, the 
the month number which is 11 okay so this these are the two things that you have to um, you have to keep it in keep in mind okay let me all right all right so all of you are ready for the game so the first operation that you have to do is take the month number for example i have chosen today's date only so the month number is 11 take the month number and uh, you uh, you write it down somewhere or you can even calculate it in the mind now the second step you have to do is you have to multiply the number month number by 2 double meaning multiply by 2 so what is the double of 11 it is 22 all right everybody on step 2 all right we are going to step 3 in step 3 what you have to do is add 5 to this number so you will get 22 plus 5 which is 27 all right you will have a different answer so please don't uh, confuse yourself you will have a different answer i'm just showing you an example what you have to do do not type your answer in the chat box right now the next step is that you have to multiply by 5 so anybody knows an easy way, easy way to multiply by 5 there is an easy way what you can do is you can multiply by 10 and divide by 2 that is also fine so this is an easy way to multiply by 5 so 27 into 10 is 270 half of 270 half of 200 is 100 half of 70 is 35 so the answer should be 135 so you will have a different answer don't get confused now fifth step fifth step is that you have to put a zero behind the answer so the answer that i got is 135 so i'll put a zero behind the answer which is 1350 so this is step 5 you should add a zero behind the answer so all of you are in step 5 can you confirm if you are in step 5 kind, kindly put in the chat box y space 5 so if you have reached till step 5 write y space 5 Yeah, Manvita gives us thumbs up. What about others? What about Bhuvan? What about Amar? Rakesh? Uh, who are the others? Who are Sudarshana? Okay. All right. So I think everybody is in step 5 right now. So you have an answer in step 5. Okay. Now to the answer in step 5, what you have to do is add your date of birth so which means this date so for my example i'm going to add 20 so for me the answer is going to be 1370 everybody might have got an answer by step 6 now what you have to do is all of you can post your answer in the chat box i'll try to guess your birthday uh, from the answer okay okay so manvita your uh, date is 25 your month is august am i right 25 august niti uh, your date is 20 and your month is may if it is correct at least give a thumbs up if it is not correct give a thumbs down is it right manvita all right all right okay somebody else rakesh gives 770 so it is the the date is 20 and the month is uh, 5 which is may 
So May 20th is your birthday. Rakesh and Nidhi, both of you have the same birthday. All right, good. So I won't share the secret sauce. <laughs> uh, you can try to uh, try to decode how I have uh, done that. Uh, all right, okay. So others who wish to give, what about uh, Bhuvan? Bhuvan, have you finished your calculations? Or should we wait? Somebody who wish to have their birthday being guest uh, can put their final answer after step six. All right. So, yeah, so I get a, a confirmation from Bhuvan to continue. Okay, fine. So you can uh, even uh, say the answer at the end of the lecture or sometime in between. So I'll try to guess at that point. All right. So hope you enjoyed the game. So what we learned in this is how to multiply by 5. So remember this, there is an easy way, method to multiply a number with 5. You can multiply by 10 and divide by 2. So this is a, a way of being creative. So you have to find out ways in which you can minimize your mental stress uh, and make calculations much easier on the head. All right. So Bhuvan has been asking a question uh, in the chat box. Uh, I think it is a puzzle. Uh, uh, I'll have to look into that. Let us have a discussion after the lecture. Would that be fine? All right. Uh, so Bhuvan, kindly wait till the end of the lecture. I'll, I'll definitely come to your puzzle. Uh, so um, kindly have patience. Okay. So now we are going to go to the multiplication laboratory and going to see how the multiplication works. So suppose uh, we want to do a multiplication of a two digit number by a single digit, say 74 multiplied by eight, what we do is seven times eight and four times eight. So seven times eight, most of us know the table, it is 56. If you don't know the table also, it's fine. You can uh, easily do because 8 meaning uh, 8 is equivalent to writing 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2. So you double 7 it is 14, 14 doubled is 28, 28 doubled is 56. That is another way of doing. 4 multiplied by 8 can also be done similarly the answer is 32. Now you have to combine these two answers to form what is the answer for 74 multiplied by 8. So for that you will have to do this carry operation you have to carry the number 3 to 6 so you will have to add 6 plus 3 which is 9 the first and the last digit remains the same let's do one other example 827 multiplied by 3 827 multiplied by 3 so what you do is 8 multiplied by 3 which is 24 8 2 multiplied by 3 is 6 7 multiplied by 3 is 21. So individual uh, individual digits you are multiplying with 3. Now here the first two numbers you look it is 24 and 6. So there is no carry operation. Why? Because this is only a single digit. Since this is only a single digit there is no carry operation. So the number you can write it as 246 itself. You just remove that comma. Now the last number is 21 which also has to be included but 21 is a two digit number. So you write 246 which is the answer from the first step comma 21 and next what you have to do is you add this 2 as a carry to the 6. So you get the number 2481. The answer is 2481. All right. Now we are going to go to a generalized one. Before we generalize something, let us do an example to understand whether everybody has, uh, everybody is on the same page or not. So let us take um, an easy example over here. Let's do 78 multiplied by uh, 5. So I can do 5 multiplied by 7, 
what is 5 multiplied by 7 it is 35 comma 5 multiplied by 8 is 40 now i just have to do this carry operation so this answer is going to be 390 all right so everybody understood this thing so hope you have understood now what you are going to do is we are going to extend this particular logic to multiplication of two two digit numbers so i am going to call this uh, particular slide as two figure jokers so you just have to listen to this first i will explain using as many examples as possible so the first example is here 21 multiplied by 3 23 okay i have to do multiplication of 21 with 23 i know how to multiply 21 with 3 i know how to multiply 21 with 2 but i don't know exactly how the carry operations are going to happen when i multiply 21 with 23 together so this is the point when vedic mathematics is providing a sutra or a formula to make this calculation easier so the first step is what is called as vertical step so let me write it here step one step one is what is called as vertical step everybody knows what is vertical right i am going to two, draw two lines you have to tell me which is vertical and which is horizontal uh, so this is uh, option a this is option b i don't think i have to give an option c which is vertical a or b come on it's an easy problem oh amar says it's a uh, somebody else says it is b so this is horizontal i think everybody is uh, viewing your video correctly so uh, as far as i have drawn in the slide it, this is horizontal so your for example your bed is a horizontal thing whereas your cupboard is vertical okay your bed is horizontal your cupboard is vertical so the step one while you do two figure multiplication you can call, call it two figure joker multiplication as vertical step vertical multiplication so what is 2 multiplied by 2 everybody knows it is 4 the second step is to do crosswise or crisscross multiplication have you heard about this term crisscross multiplication so if you don't know what is crisscross i'll show you all right so this is what is crisscross now you multiply 2 multiplied by 3 and 2 multiplied by 1 so 2 multiplied by 3 the answer is 6 and 2 multiplied by 1 answer is 1 so i have to add both the answers which is 6 plus 1 so in between i am just putting this colon so that i understand that this is step 2 so this is step 2 this much is step 2 now i'll put a third colon sorry second colon here and i'll write what is step 3 so step 3 is again vertical so this is vertical multiplication So hope everyone is able to read my handwriting if not please write uh, that you cannot see it properly uh, vcv okay so i call this method as vcv so two figure joker multiplication is going to be vcv vertical crisscross and vertical so what is my last number here it is 1 multiplied by 3 which is 3 now what i have to do is i have to write the final answer the final answer is 4 6 plus 1 is 7 
and the last digit is 3. So this is the answer 473. All right. So hope you have somewhat understood the method. Let us do one more example. So recall the VCV method for two figure multiplication. Again, you will see the visualization. You just have to write 1 multiplied by 2. So I want to multiply 14 with 21. 1 multiplied by 2 is 2. I will put a colon. Next is crisscross. 1 multiplied by 1 and 4 multiplied by 2. So 1 plus 4 multiplied by 2 is 8. So I will write 1 plus 8. There is a colon. And last, 4 multiplied by 1 answer is 4 so the answer final answer is going to be 294 294 it's very direct you don't have to do any carry operations we will specifically study what will happen if there is carry so everybody uh, are you on the same page are you understanding how to do two figure vcv multiplication if you have understood, write VCV in the chat box. VCV in the chat box. If you have not understood, write NO in the chat box. Okay. So, all right. So, remember VCV stands for vertical, crisscross and vertical. Okay. Manvita still has some doubt. So, Manvita, I will give you uh, one more example and I will show one more thing. Okay, let me clear this stuff. I will explain once again for Manvita. Before that, let me erase this thing that I have written in the middle because it is obstructing whatever appeared in the slide. All right. So, this is the VCV method which has three steps. The vertical step followed by crisscross followed by vertical and this uh, is a sutra or a formula which is called as vertically and crosswise the name of the sutra has been written here in fact there is a well-known book in vedic mathematics the number the sutra is given a number three that's why i have put directly from that book it's called vertically and crosswise and the, the Sanskrit name is Urdhva Tirbhagyam. So you don't uh, take effort to learn the Sanskrit name now. You just have to remember the English name. So some, some books also call this as Urdhva Tiryak. So this is the complete name. Uh, you can, if you want to learn the Sanskrit name, this is called as Urdhva some books put a dash on top of you all right so the uh, sutra urdu thiriyak or vertically and crosswise can be understood by this uh, three letters v c v whenever you have to multiply two digit numbers you have to do these three steps the first step is vertical. I am writing this. This is for Manvita. So 2 multiplied by 2. The answer is 4. You write it down. So after you write the first operation, you put a colon. So this is only for beginning. When you are not able to do it in the mind, put 2 columns. In the second step, you just have to multiply crisscross. Everybody understands crisscross, right? Like opposites so here the opposites are 2 and 3 and the other opposite is 1 and 2 so you multiply 2 and 3 that is 6 you multiply oh 2 and 1 the answer is 2 i had made a mistake here the answer should be 2 here so the answer is slightly different here nobody pointed out in fact so the answer is 2 so good that Manvita has asked this doubt so we could figure out the mistake here. So 2 times 1 is 2. So I will write 6 plus 2. The last step is V again which is vertical which is the answer is 3. So the final answer is going to be 4. 
add this up 8 4 8 3 is the final answer all right nidhi has also pointed out the so good that some students are listening to the lecture well so let us do 14 multiplied by 21 once again so so that everybody understands this very well so the first step is v vertical 1 multiplied by 2 is 2 uh, the second step is crisscross so crisscross is 1 multiplied by 1 1 multiplied by 1 is 1 4 multiplied by 2 is 8 so 1 plus 8 that will be 9 the last step is 4 multiplied by 1 which is 4 so the final answer is going to be 294 all right so hope uh, everybody has understood manvita if you have understood kindly give a thumbs up so that we can go to the next topic Mm. kindly be fast on the chat so that we don't waste uh, time again okay manvita says no so manvita we are going to do a little bit more practice exercises next so probably you will pick it up as we do that all right so i'll, I'll just explain it one uh, once or uh, twice with the practice problems so we are going to do moonwalk practice anybody knows what is moonwalk practice so moonwalk practice is like suppose you are going with uh, going uh, uh, for a walk in the night or you are just walking in your garden or in your house um, just you keep one topic in your mind some problem that you have seen in the class and just visualize the problem in the mind just like you see in the screen so you should be able to see uh, the problem that you are going to uh, going to uh, think about while you are walking uh, that should be in the mind if you are not able to visualize it for beginners what you can do is that you tell it out loud so that you can hear your own voice okay so suppose i'll give you an example you want to do the calculation 22 multiplied by 31 in your mind just before starting the walk write this uh, problem somewhere 22 multiplied by 31 you read it out loud 22 multiplied by 31 it will be registered in your mind and you can visualize it well all right so we are going to do this moonwalk practice i will not touch the pen here i will be just talking about that vcv method and i am going to do every calculations in the mind so the first step is v vertical so i'll do 2 multiplied by 3 6 i register that in the mind then i visualize 2 semi 2 um, sorry i visualize that colon so 6 colon next step is c or crisscross crisscross is 2 multiplied by 1 plus 3 multiplied by 2 which is 2 plus 6 what is 2 plus 6 it is 8 so i can visualize 6 colon 8 now the last step is vertical so the last vertical multiplication is going to be 2 multiplied by 1 which is 2 so 6 colon 8 colon 2 the answer is going to be 682 all right so this is how you have to practice it only if you practice like this you will be able to become strong in mental calculation now for the purpose of those who are just learning about the method what i will do is i'll show pictorially how to multiply so this is the first vertical step okay i'll write the letter v here to indicate its vertical so 2 multiplied by 3 that is why the answer is 6 now the second is crisscross I will write the letter C here to indicate it is crisscross. 2 multiplied by 1 plus 2 multiplied by 3. So 2 multiplied by 1, the answer is 2. If you are not able to register that in the mind, what you can do is you, you come back to the paper where you have initially written the problem. The first thing that you got is 6. You put two, uh, the two dots or two co the colon uh, sign. 
you write 2 multiplied by 1 as 2, 3 multiplied by 2 as 6. Then go ahead with the last one where it is vertical step 2 multiplied by 1 or 2. Now you just have to add this 2 plus 6. Gradually you will be strong and you will be able to do every calculation in the mind. So Manvita, I will show you one more example like this. After that, I will give you two for your own practice. So let's do 61 multiplied by 31. What is 61 multiplied by 31? Again, I am trying to do it in mind. So the first is 6 multiplied by 3, which is 18. So visualize 18 colon crosswise I am going to do 6 multiplied by 1 and 3 multiplied by 1, which is 6 plus 3, which is 9. So 18 colon 9. The last one is vertical 1 multiplied by 1 which is 1. So 18 colon 9 colon 1. So the answer is going to be 18 9 1. So that is 1891 is the answer. All right. So Manvita, I think you are on track because you have given the answer in the chat box. So this is one problem for all of you to solve. I'll give you exactly 30 seconds to solve it. 31 multiplied by 31. You can adopt whatever method you are comfortable with. Your time starts now. So remember VCV, that is enough for doing this multiplication. So as usual, uh, Adityan gives the first answer. We'll have to wait for somebody else also so that we can check. Okay, so you are all, you are all doing great now. Uh, so you have given the answer in 10 or 15 seconds it seems. So I think uh, the method has registered in your mind. So let us uh, do it loudly here. Vertical step 3 multiplied by 3 9 colon 3 multiplied the crosswise step 3 multiplied by 3 is 3 3 multiplied by 3 is 3 again. So colon 6 9 colon 6 last number is going to be 1 multiplied by 1 which is 1. So I think the answer is 961. So that's what I see in the chat box as well. So congratulations to all of you. Now the last one is a little bit uh, more easier. 13 multiplied by 13. Everybody knows if you have learned the multiplication table up to 20 or so. Uh, all right. So I think it's it's uh, it's easier. So apply C V V C V here. So V C V is one multiplied by one, which is one. Three one multiplied by three three plus one multiplied by three, which is six. Three multiplied by three is the last vertical. So the answer is one six nine. So hope everyone has understood this. So try the moonwalk practice from today. So after today's class. After having dinner, uh, etc., you can uh, write one problem your own. You can cook up your own problem and register that in your mind. Go for a walk and try to figure out whether you can do the calculation using moonwalk. All right. So now let us see one more additional case and we we'll learn how to deal with carry operations. So this will be slightly more tedious. You will need some practice to do this in mind. So let us take the first example. I want to do the, uh, the multiplication of 23 with 41. 23 with 41. I'll do the vertical step. So let me check whether I have the visualization already there. Uh, it should be there, I guess. Okay, so this these are the steps. VCV, the vertical, crisscross and vertical. So in the vertical step, what I get is 2 multiplied by 4, which is 8. If I do the crosswise, I'm going to get 2. I'll write as it is 2 plus 4 multiplied by 3, which is 12. And the last one is going to be vertical 3 multiplied by 1 is 3. So if I translate this, I get 8, this colon, 
14 colon 3. Now, whenever you have more than one digit in between two columns, you have to give one as a carry, the last digit as a carry. So, in this case, you get the number 14. So, give one as a carry to the next place. So, your final answer is going to be 943. Yeah, so hope everybody has understood this. If you have not understood, don't worry so much. I'm going to do one more example here. 23 multiplied by 34. You do vertical, 2 multiplied by 3, 6. Crisscross, 2 multiplied by 4, 8. Plus 3 multiplied by 3, which is 9. So, 8 plus 9 is 17. I'll write as it is because everybody will be able to understand. 8 plus 9 from the crisscross step. Last step is vertical, 3 multiplied by 4, which is 12. So, I will rewrite this below. 6 colon 17 colon 12. Now you can you can see there are two two digit numbers. So whenever two digit number comes, you give that extra digit, the tens place digit to the next place. So if I give this here, this will become 18. So start from the last digit, it is 2. I gave here 18 is the number. So write 8. It is 18, so give 1 carry to 6. So the answer is going to be 782. All right. So I hope everyone has understood. Let us verify if you have understood. So you can do this problem 33 multiplied by 44. I'll give you exactly this time, I'll give you 45 seconds because this involves carry. So here the answer is 943. Is the answer. So everybody starts now. Your time starts now. I'll wait for at least two students to write the answer on the chat box. All right, Manvita has the fastest finger, it seems. All right, so Manvita has given two answers. All right. Okay, so let's verify. I have seen two answers in the chat box. So vertical, crisscross vertical, 3 multiplied by 4 is 12. You write it as it is. Again, 3 multiplied by 4 is 12. 3 multiplied by 4 in the other crisscross is 12. So you have to add 12 plus 12. And in the last vertical step, it is going to be 3 multiplied by 4 or 12 again. Now, write the answer in full. That is 12 colon 12 plus 12 is 24 colon 12. So, as we said, whenever there is a two digit, you give the carry as the tens place digit. Everybody understands what is the tens place digit, right? So, in 12, 2 is the units place, 1 is the tens place. So you give that as the carry to the next. So the answer is going to be, I'll start from the last two. This will become 25, so write 5. And 2 is going to get carried to 12. 12 plus 2 is 14. So the answer is 1452. So Manvita, you are right. 1452 is the answer. 1452. Others also, Nidhi and Bhuvan, you are also right. All right, everybody is comfortable with doing this. So let's verify that using one last problem. 53 multiplied by 84. This will be slightly difficult. I will give you one minute this time. So your time starts now. So as much as possible, try to do it in your mind. All right, if you get the answer, please put that in the chat box. All right, we are close to 30 seconds. All right, Manvita puts the answer. Let's wait till some more time. 
yes adityan also has posted let's wait for 15 more seconds so that others who are on the sum let them also complete yes good amar has also given the answer in the chat box let's verify so let's do a uh, vertical cr crisscross and vertical first vertical step the answer is 5 multiplied by 8 of 40 i'll put a colon next is 5 multiplied by 4 20 20 plus 3 multiplied by 8 is 24 so 20 plus 24 i have to do which is which is what 20 plus 24 is 44 the last vertical step is 3 multiplied by 4 or 12 now just remember the carry operations one goes as carry here so the answer is going to be 2 here this is going to be 45 so i can write 5 here this 4 will go as a carry to the next place so 4 plus 40 is going to be 44 so the final answer is going to be 4452 so good that i can see all of you have almost found out the answer for the last one so gradually the purpose is going to do all these computations in the mind and you should only write the answer as 4452 so that is the gradual thing after these nine classes you will be in a position to do that all right so that is the training that we are going to take up all right so i think uh, we don't have enough time to cover the next few topics which i had intended uh, so what i will do is i will end the lecture here and i wanted to show you um, one or two items that I, that i'm going to use in this course so item one i have already shown uh, before we started with the lecture but suppose somebody were absent or did not get it properly let me let me explain it once again okay so what i have prepared here is a checklist so everybody can see this checklist isn't it so it's called vedic mathematics part 3 checklist so in this checklist i have written week 1 week 2 week 3 and week 4 so we have around 9 classes so around 4 weeks it will take okay so this is week one so what i have done is i have written the topics that we have covered in this class uh, here so what you will be getting is in the description of this particular video in the uh, description of this particular video you will see a link to this checklist and that checklist nothing is filled like you won't see anything written there like this so what you can do is after you finish the class recall what topics you have learned you have heard in the class write one by one so for example today we have seen vedic mathematics overview or history so you can write history of vedic mathematics something like that you can write uh, so like this you can write history of vedic mathematics the second topic that we have done is a review of multiplication methods the third topic that we have covered is uh, vertically and crosswise or we call it call it as cvc so you can sorry vcv right vcv so you can put vcv here like that you can write each topic that you have learned now suppose you have understood the topic you put a tick mark against that topic so for example if you have understood what we talked in history of vedic mathematics you put a tick mark if you have understood the review of multiplication methods you put a tick mark against it if you have understood vertically and crosswise put a tick mark against it so this will be easier for you to clear your doubts now suppose at the end of the week you see that one of the topics does not have a tick mark so let's say you don't have a tick mark in two figure multiplication with carry somebody is having a doubt so in that case when we meet for the next class you can ask this doubt 
all right so i'll give you some time so that you can clear this particular doubt so in the chat box actually uh, in the beginning we had posted this particular checklist it's available in the google drive uh, now after the lecture you can see it in the description of the youtube video all right now the second item so hope you have understood about checklist don't worry so much it is uh, everything is written over here all right so the second item that i wanted to show you is the worksheet so i will be giving a worksheet which consists of two problems two problems it will be word problems with options multiple choice options so here is a sample worksheet so day one i have written you can write your name and whichever class you belong to now it will be a word problem sometimes you will have a hint in it and there will be four options so you can click on whichever option after solving this sum you can click on whichever option it is a radio button so for example if this is the answer you can put it this radio button here suppose you want to change the answer by default you can only select one as the answer only one of the option is correct similarly there will be problem second problem as well for this also there will be options given so it will take you hardly 20 minutes to solve one worksheet so i am planning to give uh, at least two worksheets in a week so that you stay connected with the course so only if you practice you will gain the flexibility to learn the other subject matters okay so for this i have made a google form let me show that as well so this google form is there so this is also shared in today's description box so read the instruction very carefully so in this google form i have given the link to both the worksheet day one and also the checklist which i had shown earlier so you have to solve the problem you can solve the problem in the pdf file itself this pdf file that i am showing after you solve the problem write your name and class so i am just putting some random name over here uh, let's say rahul somebody by the name rahul please excuse me so if if rahul is in class 7 put class 7 and then save the form save the form so it will be saved and after you save you start filling the form and there is an option of uploading so in the form i have given an option to upload the worksheet with solution so you just need to upload this p p saved pdf which you can easily do so in your form there will be an option to add file currently uh, it is not activated in your form it will be activated so there you can add the file and you can give some comments at the end whether you liked the lecture or some doubt was there you can put all the feedback here in the form so after the lecture kindly see the uh, kindly see the description box all right so manoj kumar says uh, what is the class limitations so limitations i don't know what is meant by limitations are you are you asking about class timings so today i have taken the class uh, additionally 25 minutes right now uh, but from the next class onwards i will be sticking on to one hour classes so mostly it will be 55 minutes and 5 minutes for uh, uh, question answer you'll get five to ten minutes for question answer all right so is is this clear so if it is clear kindly give a thumbs up in the chat box so that i can get some feedback okay manoj kumar asked which class should be there to answer sorry i did not understand that are you asking which class you should enter here 
or right i am not sure so i'm not sure what okay okay manoj you can write whichever class or uh, if you are in 10th standard write 10th here if you are in 8th standard write 8 here that's what i mean okay once you enter that uh, save the form save this particular form and then upload it all right i think uh, we are almost on time uh, now i see one particular uh, uh, question being put in the chat box let me uh, let me uh, let me understand the question so this is asked by bhuvan so bhuvan is asking a puzzle it seems if there are 100 members in a row if one person kills the second and gives the gives to the third and third person kills fourth one and gives sword to fifth like that if it continues who will be left so i think it's a puzzle uh, but i am not able to understand the question well it is slightly incomplete i think so i understand that there are 100 people standing and there is a person in the first is it related to whatever we uh, learned today if it is related then we can discuss in the next class let me have a look into that okay bhuvan um, you can ask in the next class if it is related to something that we uh, talked about in today's class or at least if it is related to some uh, sutra that we will be learning in vedic mathematics okay it is part of logical thinking all right good uh, so you can try to solve it and if you get the answer you can explain to the class in the next lecture okay uh, i can see many of you are trying to answer so kindly don't bring in uh, totally different topics in this class um, because it is impo it will disturb the uh, the flow of the class so uh, bhuvan uh, only bring questions that are relevant to whatever we are dealing in vedic mathematics so i don't discourage you from asking questions but uh, try to make it relevant to the class all right all right so i think uh, we'll have to say goodbye now uh, i have taken uh, more than one hour so it might be a little bit tiring so kindly go and visit the description box of the video after the class there you will have all the materials that i have talked about today uh, and try to solve those problem it will just take you uh, 20 minutes and try to upload the solutions so we'll discuss the solutions in the next class which is next friday at 6 30 so kindly be on time so thank you and namaste.